Good morning everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to do my very last dragonfly. Now I did have one sketched in here. Remember he had his wings sideways? I've ironed him out. I just didn't, I don't know, it was something about his body shape didn't seem to match and uh, I'm, I'm really thinking now I'm just going to keep them all the same sort of profile. He was just the odd, the odd guy out. So he's gone. <laughs> so I need to draw myself in another one. So I'll just do that. And then away we will go. And I'm thinking we'll do a little purple guy this time. Trying to get him as even as I can, both sides. They always change a little bit once you start stitching, but I'll at least start with a bit of a even looking fellow. Might make his wings a little smaller. I've got a hang of a mess happening here now. That's okay. I do have my iron there, but it's not turned on. Oh yeah, that's pretty good. Looks like a mess, but let me just turn my iron on and just tidy him up a little bit. While that heats up, I'll find some threads. So, purple, purple, purple. I grabbed out some beads, <clears throat> a little bit of beads, and my threads. That should take me easily down the purple lane. Gosh, the variations that you could do with these butterflies. Now, better have a look at my beads because I'm thinking we're going to drift in here a little bit. So it could be a bit of pink as well. I'm thinking the veins inside him pink and the outside. Maybe that, or do we go bold? Go bold. That's a fine thread. Maybe, maybe we do the three. We'll see. See how we go. Who knows? Until we know, we don't know. That sounded very philosophical, didn't it? It's my little iron, nice and hot. rid of these excess lines and then I can see if we're definitely <clears throat> okay. Decision. What are we going to do? I think I'm going to use that darker one, you know. Or do I use that one? So the reason I like this one is because it's thicker. So you get a good, I guess, shape to your wing. It's nice and raised. That's what I'm trying to say. But I'm thinking I might couch it down with the other one. So then I get a very subtle stripiness to... So how have you all been? Good, I hope. Behaving yourselves, I hope. I'm trying hard to behave myself. Okay, a little bit excited about my, my best mate. Her and her husband have sold the house they built in Brisbane for an investment. And... Um, have made themselves a nice profit 
It's like those once every 25 years when something happens that you manage to snag a good profit. Every other time you sell a house, it's like, oh goodness, just a little bit. And it's the whole COVID crazy, just the real estate market, especially in Australia. I'm not sure about the rest of the world, but it just went a little bit silly. And they just timed it nicely. Well, it wasn't planned for COVID. It was just they had sold their original house and they wanted to build closer to transport. They'd bought their block and had not planned on making a profit whatsoever. It was just relocating to be closer to transport. And then COVID hit. Then they couldn't get a builder. And it took forever to get something sorted. In the meantime, the prices went crazy. So their block of land alone, this is without finding a builder, doubled in price. So that in itself was a profit. So they decided to carry on with the build, which they did consider, you know, selling the block. And that profit could have meant that my mate, Mary Ann, could retire in a couple years. It sort of brought forward her retirement, which was just mind blowing. It was just, oh, we couldn't believe it. And then, they decided if they did sell the block in Australia, you pay capital gains tax. So you've got to give the government a tax, a portion of the money that you've made the profit, you know, the profit bit, which just seemed like a, a shame. So they decided, no, stick to the plan, build the house. So they finally got the house built and then they got it valued and it too had increased, not as much as that block of land, but it had increased a modest amount so they decided right we'll live in it for the minimal amount of time that you have to before otherwise if you were to build it and immediately sell it once again capital gain tax would kick in so they spoke to their accountant they rang the tax department just to double check everything and found out what the minimal amount of time is that you can live in it and then put it on the market and you don't pay capital gains tax. You get to keep the profit because it is your house. So they finally got through all of that. And this has taken three years. This is, hasn't been a quick process. And they put it on the market just before Christmas. And um, they had a few lookers, but it's not as hot as it was. You know, the usual thing. You think you're in the, you're in the hot zone and everyone's buying houses and then by the time you get your act into gear and get your house on the market you've missed the peak it's like it always seems to be that way but eventually in january they had a buyer come through offered them close to what they wanted it probably a little bit less so they were a little bit cheeky these buyers but anyway they thought well we won't be greedy we'll take our profit and go why hang around for more and it may not sell and meanwhile the market's dropping away it's all those decisions you've got to make when you're on the market so long story cutting it short house has sold monies have settled they're back now at a rental property planning their next move and the next move this is where i get excited is Barham. Years ago, we said to them, come to Barham, come to Barham. And um, if you get a block of land now, you've got plenty of time to pay it off. The blocks of land are really reasonably priced. So they looked around for, I think, 18 months and finally found a block come on the market. And at the time was three doors up from where we were. So their backyard was the big lake. So they secured the block, got it for a really good price and have been busy putting, you know, extra money on it to pay it off and try and set themselves up. In the meantime, this whole Brisbane house thing happened. And because they'd got the block at Barham 
at a really good price, it too increased somewhat, not as much as Brisbane, like Brisbane's just crazy now. Oh, my heart bleeds for young people who have got to try and get themselves started. Oh, gosh. I don't know what what's going to happen there. Anyway, don't get me started on the way the fabric of society is moving. <clears throat> anyway, they had their block at Barham, a couple doors up from our original house, with their backyard onto Lake. Beautiful spot. Like, oh. It's, you know, we'd never thought any of us that we'd have that ability in the future to live in such a pretty place. We, you know, you're busy in the big city getting your life online and, you know, trying to make an income and build yourself something for your future. It's, you know, what you do when you're a young person busting your hump trying to get, get going. So we'd always, as a two couples watching, you know, watching their children grow up, talking about their kids, how what will happen with them and, you know, all those dreams and plans you have as young people. So we're now at that point where we can sort of head in the direction of something for mum and dad. Kids are raised, the kids are finding their own way in life. They'll stay in Brisbane, of course, because their career's there. And, of course, their eldest daughter, she actually works for us and manages one of our Christmas stores. And she's been with us since she was 14 and a half as just a young casual and now is our store manager. And we've given her extra duties over the years, so she's very much part of our business. And um, I've lost the whole point of what I was trying to tell you. Oh, yes. Why am I excited? <laughs> well, yesterday they went through to Harvey Bay where all the builders are based um, and met with the builder they've selected to build their house at Barham. Now, how exciting. They, they're ready to start. We've been playing with house plans they're, they've sort of taken a few ideas from our place because they can walk through that space and go, right, that's what it would feel like. It's, it's really tricky. If you've built a house, you'll know what I mean. But if you haven't, it's really hard when you draw something on paper to feel what it feels like to turn a corner between rooms or walk down a corridor or to conceptualise that that space it can be really tricky so yeah it was good I think about a month ago when they first interviewed about four builders in the area we sort of had a rough plan and in our place up there we had the tape measure out and it says right over your patio would be this and we were able to draft it out on the on the floor so they could see really easily space in that but still it is it is a challenge. I need to end that off. Just concentrate for a moment, girl, and stop yibby yappering. Need to knock this little guy off. Oh, do I? Can I just scoot across to the other side? No. Yeah, so they drove through yesterday. We're back in Brisbane at the moment. Um, they, they drove through to Harvey Bay, met with the builder of their choice, paid the deposit, and now the builder can really start sort of drafting plans and getting that final price for them. At the moment, it's all pie-in-the-sky pricing, but they did manage to find a plan from that builder that's pretty much spot on. My goodness. We actually walked through the display home and as soon as I walked in to the kitchen area, oh, I fell in love. The kitchen, I've got to draw it for you guys. Now we're sidetracked. So their block is like that. All right, and that's the lake. So the back of their place looks at the lake where our place is on the other side of the lake and the lake is beside us. So all of our living is to the side of the house. 
theirs is to the back. So they found this, this um, plan. So it sits on the block like that. There's a patio. They're gonna close it in like we did so that you are sunproof, midgy proof, mozzie proof, fly proof, wind proof, rain proof, pretty much proofed from the outside world. But that's a patio area which is glass around it to you know protect you from the elements. Then they have um, that section there is their master bedroom, so they get a lovely view. That there's going to be a bit of a lounge, so we'll put a lounge suite in there. Then you have your kitchen table. They'll have another one out there. Then there's a kitchen bench, the wall where all your oven your oven would sit, and then the you walk around the back here and that's where you have like a, a butler's pantry where you could make your coffee and have your mix master and things like that. Let me zoom in. And then the laundry tucks in here, the wall goes through, hallway out, bedrooms, etc. So everything is at the back. Their bedroom, a big patio. This kitchen is amazing. And the thing that really really made it look great for me is there's a, a hip or a peak that goes through this section so the roof slopes up to it does that make sense so you get this effect through the, that room and it just felt so open and so beautiful and oh beautiful the only thing we didn't like is the way the bedrooms were positioned so all they really got to do is nut that out, get a powder room into it, um, and that was it. It's not a, not a big house, but it's a very well laid out house that I think it'll be really easy living. <clears throat> and um, in Kev's budget, so he was happy. Marianne and I are standing in the kitchen going, wow, how clever, 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 some really clever design elements that you can fit a lot into a small space and that's sort of what they were looking for they want to you know oh, get bang for your buck so it's all very exciting that all happened about a month ago when we walked into that builder but they still had to wait for a couple other builders to come back with some suggestions or some plans so all that's been happening and they shot up to Harvey Bay and put the deposit down with this particular builder. So, yeah, really, really cool. Very exciting. So, me buddy will be up there soon. And she's going to take long service leave for a year or so she's been with uh in the teaching industry since she was a pup since she come out of uni so she's got long service leave so she's going to take that and i think that nearly gives her a year and a bit and then uh retire and she's got lots of opportunities to do some relief teaching because there's quite a few of those schools she's in the catholic system so there's quite a, a lot of the schools in the district and they're just screaming out for relief teachers. So there's a, a great opportunity there. So that'll keep her busy without having the, the stress of being within the industry. And Kev, he works for um, Telstra. So he doesn't really need an office since COVID, a lot of those types of roles. Telstra is our big telecommunication company. Kev works in the planning section. So if you're a business that is opening up and you want uh, a telephone line to a building that you're renting, he organises the technicians to come out and install it and sort of is your liaison person. But he's sort of now, he's in structural stuff and he's working currently on the Olympics that are coming to Australia, starting to plan, getting phone lines into the buildings and, yeah, all sorts of things. He's got a very interesting job. 
He does tear his hair out occasionally, trying to organise everything, but sometimes we see him and he's a little bit stressed. But he, um, he's been doing that since, gosh, since he was a pup. So he just needs a laptop, needs a phone line, and he can work anywhere in this country. So, yeah, I'm going to predict within two years they will be full-time living at Barham, across the lake. We've been planning on um, how are we going to do a roast dinner because we often get together you know, twice a month for a roast dinner or sometimes every Saturday night for a roast dinner or a, a, just a meal, you know, just hanging out. We've been doing that since goodness knows when. And being that there's a lake in between us now, we're like, do we send up a smoke signal that lets the other ones know that dinner's served? <laughs> so we've been having a bit of fun. We reckon we need a zip line. I've got a knot hanging out the back here that is in the wrong spot look at this plumbing thing here look at that i might have to just stitch it down i could probably undo the knot and slide it down the, the needle oh how disappointing i'll stitch it down i just don't want to pull at it too much because i'll make the little wings sort of wriggle around a little bit and I might lose that nice tension that I've got. Oh, what a shame. That's because I'm yibby yabbering so much. I'm not concentrating. But it's all good. It's all good. Nothing that can't be fixed. So, yeah, roast dinner's on. How do we get across the lake other than walking around the bitumen or hopping in the car and driving around the bitumen? We're only talking less than a kilometre. But it would be fun to go across the lake to dinner. <laughs> so the boys were like, we need a zip line. Could you imagine it? The neighbours would be impressed, wouldn't they? They'd start seeing a steel cable getting strung across this lake. <laughs> oh, I'd be thinking those blooming Brisbane people moving into the district. They've now installed a, a zip line. Just looking out the window at my two dogs. What are they chewing? Oh, it's just a branch, a bit of leaf matter. We need jet skis, that's what we need. That'd upset the neighbors. Gosh, I'd be upset. Could you imagine it? You got this quiet lake. And these new people move in and they get jet skis and just rip across the lake to go to dinner at each other's house where they could have walked across the bitumen, around the bitumen and been more nicer neighbours. be horrible. We even suggested we build a, <laughs> a floating bridge made out of pellets so we could walk across the lake to Oh, could you imagine the neighbours then? <laughs> There's all these pellets being dropped into the water with tins underneath them. You know, like the ones we used to make as kids on the farm. We'd pinch a pellet out of Dad's shed and then 20-litre um, metal drums or plastic drums, whatever we could get our hands on, and then rope them onto the bottom of the pellet so that it would float. And we'd have one each, my brother and I. And gosh, if there were cousins visiting for the school holidays, there could be up to six pellets rigged up. And then we'd set off from the front of the house where the creek was and it meandered through the whole farm. And um, if it had been a flood and there was water around, well, wow, you know, the creek was down and we'd be in there with our pellet rafts, Huckleberry Finn style, going down the the creek and then as the school holidays would roll on the water would subside like it does after a flood so the creek was no longer a nice long length of water it was large puddles with dirt and sludge in between so you'd have to drag your your, your raft through all that sludge 
to get to the next pond to continue your journey, your epic journey. <laughs> so I do have experience in building rafts. So I could, could build one that connected and went across the lake to Kevin Mary Ann. <laughs> Gosh, the neighbours would love that, wouldn't they? Like, what have we got? Ten-year-olds moved into this area? Now, do I fiddle with that knot? Am I wasting time? 25 minutes. So I'm a little excited. My little buddy is going to be a little bit closer to me and semi-retired, like myself. So we can get up to all sorts of mischief. We went to Paris together. And if she doesn't have the commitment of teaching, oh, I can see us getting into all sorts of mischief. Um, okay, so now I'm going to do his little wings. And that'll be the usual method with the feather stitch. Love the feather stitch. Fly stitch would work as well. I just find feather stitch for this scenario is just a little bit softer. It's a little bit more swishy. Okay, so I might just do a little bit of that. So bring it up for those of you who know how to do it. This is for those who don't know how to do it. Now the trick of it is to point your needle in the direction you want to go and insert your needle in straight across from where you came up. Let me zoom in. This color's not the best to see, is it? See where that thread came up? Put your needle in right opposite, but then make it come back towards the center so that you sort of keep heading. So in, back to the center. So keep heading in the direction that you want your stitch to go. Come on, bring it through. Oops, didn't catch it. There we go, simple. It's a great little stitch. Makes a great little dragonfly wing. Done. Simple as that. Love it. I might finish that off. I won't do the other side. Oh, we've got time, don't we? So quick. We'll see how we go. The body will be, oh, I don't know. Do we bead it? Do we weave it? So we've got a bit of everything here. We'll see. Let's just get our wing done. Focus on one task at a time, a girl. really enjoyed doing my little dragonflies. I'm not 100% sure if they will end up on the um, botanical beauties. I'm going to finish the piece in its entirety. So December, I will decide whether botanical beauties gets dragonflies. Maybe it won't need it. I just don't know yet. So the plan is just to keep these little guys somewhere safe and then bring them out at the end of the year if we want to add them or not. Either way, they'll be handy because like I said at the beginning of this series, this is about creating little elements that can be used for whatever project. So nearly a fussy cut piece.
just to get myself back into shot. So you can come from the front, from the top or the bottom, depends on, you know, whatever takes you, your fancy. Coming from the top of the wing, working back down, probably is a little bit easier. But the main thing is that you get, you know, your stitch right. If you're new and you haven't found Jennifer Clouston's videos, of course, she's got her three books with another one on the way. Um, I highly recommend you go and spend a bit of time watching her 15-minute stitching videos. And for those of you like myself that have been doing this a little while, I'd highly recommend we go and watch them again because there's little things that you pick up. I'm in the process of working through them again. I'd like to do some more of my little journal I started with some pages of just practicing stitches and creating floral pieces for it. Little botany journal. I haven't had a chance to get to that for a little while. So I'd like to pull it back out and brush up on all those stitches again. So stay tuned, there'll be some videos coming. Now that the dragonflies are finished, it's sort of, it's the little series in the middle of all the other series, as they say. Okay. Last wing. I sort of feel like beading. We'll have a look at these beads. It's got to be the right colour too. Is there anyone else out there watching that has their, their best mates really close? And maybe you haven't been that close as in uh, location wise for years. And then as you know, life goes on and you get yourself positioned for retirement or semi-retirement or even pre-retirement. And it just, all the stars align and you manage to all be very close to each other geographically. Let me know, I'd love to know. Do we all sort of do that, surround ourselves with our tribe? Is it a bit of a human thing to do? I think it might be. Okay. Right. I'm looking forward to getting this piece out of these, uh, this frame too, because it gives me the opportunity to pop something else in that I can fiddle around with. Now, question, what colour do we make his body? They look a bit insipid and washed out. I think he's going to be bold. I'm thinking we do a little couched edge of his body with this, and then we fill it in. Or do we weave? No, we're going to do beads. I feel like beading. So this will give us our frame of which we can fill up full of beads. So I need something to couch that down. We might just stay within our colour palette. Little pinky purple dragonfly. Didn't even think to look for some ribbon, some purple ribbons. Purple's not a colour I have a lot of. I do like it, but I just don't seem to have a lot of purple. I've got enough, enough of, uh, I guess, the shades of purple to sort of do whatever I need to do, but... around the right way. I 
what is going on back here? Heck of a mess. Feel like I'm all thumbs today. That knot hadn't come through properly, which is going to be problematic like last time. Got the purple thread hanging in my way, which is now pulled right through. Which now needs to come back out. Oh my goodness, guys. Talk about making it look harder than what it needs to be. All right, we're away. Come on, nice and close is what we want. That's it. And couch it down. Everything looking neat? Yep. I'm using my finger to hold that purple thread out of the way so that the little pink one can come through to secure it. So what have you guys got planned today? I need to do some grocery shopping. There is hardly anything in the fridge. I should have probably gone four days ago. But I'm to the point where I'm just like, nah, couldn't be bothered going out. Another day, another day. So I start munching through all of the spare things. I start having to get creative with dishes because I don't have everything. <laughs> but it's good. It's like I'm clearing out the, the back of the cupboard. It's good coming across things that have been in there for a little while and it's like oh you need to actually be binned because you're way out of date but boy you're going to feel the pain when I have to restock it's going to cost a fortune ow it's the only downfall but you know there's no use having food in the pantry that's out of date it's false false security so it's been good. I've had a clean out. See, that's twisting. That's why I think it's bouncing around so much here. That's why I'm struggling to get a nice line lying down on my cloth. That's all right. Yeah, see, see how it's flicking around? It's making couching harder than it should be. It should just lie there nicely like that. It's all good. It'll work out. I need to get a wriggle on, don't I? Look at the time. Where does it go? I was going to do this video yesterday and I just did not feel like it. I've got three videos that I need to do, which are three projects coming to a conclusion. And it's like, I feel like, I don't know, yesterday I was like, oh, the projects are done. All I've got to do is this and this on three things. So then my mind starts thinking about, oh, I wonder what about this project? And I'd like to try that and wonder what I could do with that. So my head went off onto all these different tangents and I just lost all motivation to finish the three projects. I could film a video for you guys as I was like thinking about the next projects. Does that happen to you guys? It's like, stop, just finish. In my head, they were done. So yeah, it's a slippery, slippery slope. Just need to pull that thread in now, that purple. There we go. And our little guy is secure. So the next thing will be filling his little torso, if that's what you call the body of a dragonfly. Filling it full of those dark beads. Was a bit ordinary. I'm going to do another one. It's got a bit messy there. That's what happens when you've got multiple threads going. It gets a bit tangly. It's never going to come. 
come undone. There's like knot on top of knot there. Okay. Now, so the plan would be grab ourselves the bead needle. Come on, Reg, where are you? Reginald, there he is. Oh, he's got thread in him. Good on you, lad. So we've got 20 minutes to go. So let's get a few beads down. And then, ow, he is just blooming jabbed me. Oh, Reg. Now you wonder why no one really likes you, Reg. It's because of your bad attitude. He's the only needle that I've named because we seem to have this love-hate relationship. He does a good job. He's the perfect man for the job. But by jingos, he is a difficult little fellow to get on with. Okay, one bead in. It's a very purple little, little bug. I'm going to do a few beads because I think I need to see that colour in place to decide what colour to do his tail. Do we go real pink? Getting a bead on the needle. Come on, Reg, pick it up. I try and do two. I'm going through a knot. Try and do two stitches per bead. I didn't then, but I try. It's my grandmother in my ear going, Corinne, two stitches per bead. I'll do it now. Okay, Grandma, done. Must do an update for you too on my crocheting, my blankets. Thinking of Grandma, my blankets for um, stash, stash busting, clearing out that set of drawers. I've got a lot of squares made and they're all in bundles ready to be crocheted together because they're all you know a granny square style construction so I've got them all in big bag of colors and it's just pick up a bow red journal pick up a bag and crochet them together to make the lap blanket oh came across a craft group too that is interested in taking some of the uh, yarn too which was good and they make all sorts of things for different charity groups so I'm yet to get the lady over to see she can look through the uh, cupboards and go yep that's good for us that's good for us they said they had a lot of yarn already, but they were missing sorts of styles of yarn to do certain projects. So I just said, well, look, come over, have a look through those um, five drawers and see what you want. So that's really cool. Oh, goodness me. And my mate, Mary Ann, she's got excess yarn building up again. She does a lot of crocheting. Reg, like seriously, hang on to the cotton. She is, um, she was mentioning that she's going to do a couple blankets as well, just to clear out some of her scrappy balls. She had one pattern she was talking about where you make the classic granny square but only do three rounds of it. So you crocheters out there, you'll know what I mean. You go around three times and that's it. So you can imagine the square is itty bitty, tiny. And then you get hundreds of them and join them together. And she puts the joining color as black. 
and um, I thought, oh, brilliant. I've seen her do it once before. I saw the finished product and it was stunning. So all the squares are, you know, that big, probably two inches by two inches, if that. And I thought, oh, that'd be good because I have random balls where it's just, where'd that bead go? Oh, it's gone. And I thought, well, that'd be good for those one ball of yarn. For those of you who don't know what the hang I'm talking about, Stash Busters was a challenge I set myself at the beginning of the year. I've got a heap of yarn left over from my crocheting days and it's taking up a whole chest of drawers and I didn't realise how much I had until it came into my room because it was sitting in a cupboard down at the other end of the house where I was and it was a bedroom. So it sort of stayed in the walk, uh, the robe, walk-in robey thing that was there. I moved into a bigger room and the yarn just sort of sat be there in that old space. And then when I packed up and moved everything, I was like, gosh, look at all this yarn. And so I, I got a set of drawers and that's where it all went. And I'm thinking, oh, what's that going to sit there for the next 10 years? So 2020. What year are we in? I don't know. Whatever year we're in was um, stash busting. And my challenge was to make it into something that I can gift to a charity or make it into something that I can sell and then gift the money to a charity. That was the whole premise. It was a gift. And in the process, I emptied out a chest of drawers and I want to use the chest of drawers to store my current work that I've completed. It'll be in a safe spot, out of the dust, out of light, just somewhere to put all of my needlework. And um, yeah, so we've been busily crocheting all these squares to make a blanket or two or three or four so and now there's a few of my other mates are thinking of doing it too because they've been they're crocheters and you always get that random ball of wool yarn so it's coming along nicely so i must give you guys a bit of an update i want to join a few of them so as soon as i start joining i've got to remember how to join granny squares i'll do a video there we go. So that'll be his little beaded body. Tail. What have we got? 10 minutes or so left. I haven't used this thread. I did get those beads out. But I don't know if they're the right colour. And they're really big. They're similar to the red dragonfly. I think they're too big for him. So I use that size. See the red guy? But the other thing is the red guy. Oh, hang on a minute. There's a smaller bead in there. Yep, there we go. There's two sizes. That's what we want. Yeah, because the red guide used the big bead and then I tapered it down to the little bead. This fellow, it'll have to be all the little bead. The big bead's too much. I don't know how many I need. We'll just grab a few out. Should we do a big bead to kick it off? Oh, it's too big. It's bigger than his torso. He looks looks wrong. Right. So we need Reg again. Nice long piece of cotton, Reg. Right. Okay. So 
that's just a case of get yourself a nice secured knot go through your fabric a couple times it's only a little little knot on this cotton so it could pull through so I always do a few anchoring stitches just to get myself positioned and then start picking up your you could do them one at a time but you run the risk of them being crooked and when you're doing a straight line of beads it's probably best you do three or four at a time and even then you can still get them crooked but at least you've got you know a little run of them oh, it's feel, I feel like it's got it's tautening up. Tautening? Is that a word? Probably not. I really giggle when you guys say, oh, I love your accent and the way you pronounce words and that. I don't know. I sometimes wonder it's not my accent. It's just lazy. <laughs> the Australian language can be a little bit lazy, I think. So I'm just going back through them all. There we go. Now I'm just going to come back through again, but one at a time, or at least two. Oh, you can't even see what I'm doing. I can't even see what I'm doing. Get them on, get that needle in there, Ridge. All right, we're doing three. Main thing is they don't wriggle around. So keep running your stitches through so that you get them nice and tight. They'll just sit better on your work when you go to add them to something. Yeah, that's good. I'll come up there and just do when a couch stitch over the center there just to help hold the little guys. That's pretty good. Now I'm going to pick up another four. Your pretty little dragonfly. Come on. Gosh, it's like they're clear and they're sparkling. And for some reason, my eyes this morning, all I'm just seeing is little sparkles and no holes. They're proving to be a little bit fiddly. Come on. and tight then I might come back up through here the fifth one back the original no I'll just come back through them again like don't see the fabric's getting whoopy there I think that's what's making this harder than probably what it needs to be but it's all right. I'm going to struggle until I get them secure. There we go. Now we got yous. If you're not part of our Facebook group, come on over and join us. So one of the lovely girls got a, had a dragonfly land on her hand. Wish I had my phone in here to show you the picture. I'll put it at the end of the video, actually. The dragonfly landed on her hand and she got a photo of it. Oh, my goodness. She said, see the wings. Absolutely beautiful. Oh, goodness me. <laughs> I'm really struggling here. 
yeah, this this photograph is on our Facebook in our Facebook group, um, Vintage Stitched Treasures. Come on over if you're on Facebook. Come and join us because we let you show us whatever you're working on. Doesn't matter if you buy something cool, get a book, you're stitching something that's not even connected to uh, Susanna and I and Tia. Doesn't matter. Come and show us what you're doing. It's just a place where it's like we're all hanging out around the craft table. There's all sorts of things. You do have to answer three questions. If you don't, we we can't the um, we can't bring you into the group because there's always these dodgy characters trying to get into groups on Facebook. So if you have applied to join and you got a declined, it's probably because you didn't answer questions. It's pretty simple. One is what is what country do you live in or where do you come from? You don't even have to tell us, you know, detail, just say Australia. And then what's your favorite stitch? Even if you just say, I love them all. And then the last one is you agree to the group rules, which is be kind. No nastiness, not that we've ever had any nastiness, like everyone's pretty good. Anyone nasty, we kick them out. I think I need a couple more, but not many. Maybe two. But I'll, I'll get the dragonfly picture and put it at the end of the video so that you can all see it, especially for those who aren't on Facebook. I'm sure the young lady that put it up won't mind. It's so beautiful. Oh my gosh. I keep going back and looking at it. It's just it's just one of those moments in time captured by a photo. And you'll see what I mean when you see it. And the wings. Oh. So if you haven't stitched a dragonfly yet, just grab a little scrappy piece of, of cloth. And give it a go because boy you can get really detailed imagine a big dragonfly on this piece and then you really work into work into its wings all the stitches be beautiful all right so I'm gonna take this thread now I'm gonna take Reggie right through all of those beads there Gosh, they're wriggling. Gosh, are they sparkling for you guys? They are really bouncing the light around here, which is making it hard for me to actually see. They're too sparkly. All right. Done. Oh, goodness me. So now I just want to do the little stitches at the end of the dragonfly's tail. This photo that you're going to see, you can clearly see that little bit at the end. That just is that classic dragonfly feature. Alrighty. I'll do it in this thread. I haven't used this thread. So, just a, thank you so much for hanging around and watching my dragonflies. The next thing I'll do is I'm going to fussy cut them out. This little little wiggly bit at the end of their tail. It's just the cutest. Yep, that's it. It just, it just finishes them off beautifully. What I might do too is I will, I will finish the video here. I'm just knotting this if you're wondering where the hang I've gone. Can't get it to knot. It's such a big lumpy piece of thread and there's only two little stitches so there's not much to knot into 
What I'll do is I'm going to pause the video. I will finish adding the beads to his little body here and get his eyes in with the little black cotton. Then I'll come back and show you how I'm going to fussy cut them out. So hold that thought and I'll be back. Hello everyone, I'm back and my dragonflies, I nearly said butterflies, dragonflies are finished. So the next thing is I'm going to take them out of my hoopy thing here. Oh, goodness me. These, these things are quite firm, but they are loosening up. They were really difficult to get onto the frame when I first got this thing. These frames are everywhere now. Amazon, Spotlight. Oh. And they're good because you can adjust them to suit pieces. So there's like connecting pieces. You can build them longer, smaller, whatever you need to do. So... <clears throat> All right, so there's my little dragonflies. And the plan is to fussy cut them out. Now I'm just going to do a rough cut around them. Careful not to encroach on the one beside it. Just get them roughly cut out for now. And then come back through and tidy them up a little bit with just a little bit of edging. Give yourself a, little, a fair bit, like don't be too, too stingy. And then you can always trim them back more if whatever piece you're working on in the future, that might be fine and you build in around him or you cut him out even more. <clears throat> At the moment, because I don't know where they're, going to land. <laughs> Did you notice that? That was a good joke. That was a funny one. I'm just getting them into elements that can be used. <clears throat> okay, get steady girl. Get carried away there you will have a hang of a mess. So it's just, just like the journaling, when you fussy cut out flowers and butterflies for a page of collaging or whatever, you're making a tag and you put a decorative element on a tag, same principle. Create some little, little elements that can be added to your work and the other thing too is you might do a project <clears throat> that is these tealy tones and so you might need to make more using him as your your guide or you might have a project where a few of them can be used because they suit it it really depends on the color palette i guess <clears throat> well and truly be going over the hour but that's okay <coughs> excuse me i've been listening to a lot of podcast shows where they chat to a guest and they often well they film it because they're on youtube they film it of them sitting in the studio with their headphones on at a table chatting to the guest and it'll go two and a half hours and I thought, wow, imagine two and a half hours of stitching with Corinne. Oh, gosh, you guys would be sick of me by the end of it. You'd be, I'd see you all unsubscribing because it's just too much. <laughs> but it's good because if you're stitching, you can find someone having a chat or an interview for two and a half hours and you can do a bit of stitching. Here we go. One dragonfly. Now that can be trimmed in even more if needed. Just depends on how you plan to use him. So he could still have enough fabric there to turn it under and applique him with a, 
appliqued edge. He could be trimmed right down and seed stitched to merge him with the fabric that he's sitting on. It's another good way of making something blend really well is heaps of seed stitch. Oh, I've been waiting so long for this. It's been that project that I pick up occasionally and film another one, film another one. And I thought, am I ever going to get this finished? Because it's been drifting for weeks. And it's such a simple project that I probably could have filmed it in a couple videos. But I have to come up with something else now. See what I mean by thinking about the next project? It's a shocker. I haven't finished this one. <clears throat> oh, look at my little babies. This could be a two-hour video. And you guys just glanced to the YouTube details and gone, gosh, no, she isn't. And then you've checked the time clock and gone, oh, okay, she's not. <laughs> For those of you who are disappointed because you've realised that it is not a two-hour video, thank you, bless you, you sweet, sweet things wanting to hang with me that long. And I know the rest of you are going, oh, thank goodness. Okay. Oh, look at that. I don't know who's my favourite. I think purple is my least favourite, to be honest, but it's because I'm not a purple girl. I love this gold one. How fancy are you I love that guy oh, no I don't know don't know love the little orange one so when they go onto the piece that's the point of which I will stitch their legs because I didn't want to fussy cut around legs or uh, their little feelers. So I made a decision right at the beginning of this project that I wouldn't get too fine in the detail of these little guys. And I thought it might be quite pretty that the feelers and the legs come out from the body onto the piece of which they are on. I'm pretty sure I explained that right at the very beginning. but So I like that one too because I did a bit of blanket stitch on that wing. Because this um, calico or homespun hasn't been washed, it still has sizing in it, which makes it, see how it's just not flopping? Really good. Makes it nice and solid. One more. Now I need to find myself a nice little box to put my little treasures in. My little dragonflies. Let me know if you made a few dragonflies. I know some of them have appeared in our Facebook group. But if you're not part of the group and you're not on Facebook, that's cool. Let me know in the comments if you ended up making some at some point through this little series. And have you used them yet? Oh, you precious little things. There we go. There's all my little baby dragonflies, fussy cut, ready to go onto projects. Love them. Love, love, love them. All right, guys, I better leave you now. We're well and truly an hour and probably 10, 15 minutes. Who knows? I will say goodbye. Thank you for joining me with this project. Thoroughly enjoyed it. And these little fellows will pop up in the future. I'm going to sneak over to my Botanical Beauties piece pop a few on there to see if that's a, a go or or not because I'm, I'm not decided have not decided so yeah have a great day guys and um, I will catch you all in the next video bye for now